This is part five of our five-part masterclass series. Uh, I'm really saying in essence, this is where you're getting a blueprint for personal and financial freedom. Uh, welcome aboard to all of you who are already current students of ours, uh, and all of those of you who are new. So let's see, we got um, uh, Shirley from New Jersey. I know Shirley, I've been a past, I keep wanting to accuse you of being from Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia. <laughs> Uh, we actually have a Shirley there. I, I just I'm sorry that. And then Tom's on. Hey Tom, um, I think uh, Tom, are you going to are you coming to Florida this coming weekend? Um, seems like Frank is. Um, and uh, we got some blasts from the past. Bill Burnell. Hey Bill. Hey doing, buddy. Good to see you on Virginia Beach. Um, so it's good to see all you guys, uh, veteran agents and, and you, you students alike. Uh, this is for those of you who are. You know, real estate investors, whether you're flipping homes, buying rentals, doing wholesaling, you know, managing rentals, uh, or if you like a lot of us, you really you realize eventually you should get your license um, because it does matter. It does help. And the irony is, in the past, you know, all the gurus, Carlton Sheets, Russ Whitney, you know, Ron LeGrand, Sam Merrill from Fortune Builders, Robin Thompson, uh, they all used to tell us you don't really need your license, but the fact is every single one of them has a license. <laughs> so, so I got my license years ago, and that made a huge difference. Uh, in fact, I'm just I'm not ashamed to say. In fact, I'm proud to say, uh, actually made more money from the businesses I built as a result of having my license than I even made from all the rental income. Um, so, pretty pretty substantial uh, statement there. Okay, and the reason is is listing and investing is really the foundation guys, upon which you build other businesses, okay? And if you follow Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I highly recommend you read the book, um, I've met him before he came to my mastermind group three years ago, in March, in fact, 2015, at Lake Tahoe, and we talked about that very subject. So today's class is all about leveraging what you're doing for maximum profit, okay? If you're already in the game engaged in one activity, chances are that one activity can be leveraged for two, three, four, five or more streams of income, okay? So not, today what I'm going to do is give you a couple of techniques you can use to help you if you're an investor who's got your license, or you're an agent already and you want to you want to invest, and you want to work with investors because you realize the value of having a, a one to many payoff, one client, many transactions, okay? That's what it's about. That's what this is about. Uh, and I say it for last because it's the best, all right? Um, now, real quick, uh, congratulations to all of you who have already signed up for the event this coming weekend, March 16th, 17th, 18th, uh, in Orlando at the Omni and Champions Gate. Champions Gate's right outside Orlando, to south on I-4, and uh, very close to Disney. There's actually shuttles going back and forth all weekend uh, for your families, so bring your families down. If you're not already registered, you've still got time. Um, but we're gonna be capping it off here in a couple of days. Uh, because we've had a lot of registration just in, the, just in the last week or two. Uh, so, in any case, uh, also the rooms, remember it's, uh, it's a peak season down there, so you don't want to wait too, too long. And the uh, hotel, the Omni, is gracious enough to reduce the rate <coughs> by a full third. Wave the, the resort fee, the parking is only $5 a day, it's just to really open up uh, the hearts to us and roll out the red carpet. Um, we do we have some special guests. Uh, confirmed or Ryan Snow, who is helped author um, the Miracle Morning for Salespeople, the original book, Miracle Morning, is about Hal Elrod, who's also my master my group. Uh, Ryan helped come off with a follow up book and then several others. And Ryan's written another book now, um, he's going to talk about next weekend. And Rock Thomas is coming, uh, also in my master my group. But you'll know him if you just Google Rock Thomas right now, go to Facebook, go to YouTube. He just did a video about two weeks ago that's now had over 16 million views. Okay. Okay. I've noticed for quite a while, great guy, uh, humble beginnings, he owns about $10 million in real estate and several businesses. He's going to be there. And uh, looks like we may actually have Mark Hunt, former NBA center for the Boston Celtics. He also played for the Miami Heat for a bit. Uh, Senator Tatar and Mark Hunt, Mark Hunt, who is an investor, he's going to be there. We're going to talk to you guys. So, uh, I mean, to help him in. Investing business, so, so come on down and have some fun. In any case, for today's subject, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with what we call the, the investor booklet. Okay, if you're an investor, you can use this. If you're an agent, you definitely can and should use this. 
This is a great tool to drum up business, to get clients to respond to you. Because we're not, in this method, we're not doing broadcast marketing. We're doing very specific targeting marketing. We're identifying specific groups of people who are more highly likely to respond and also uh, convert into business, okay? We don't do a broadcast marketing. When it comes to investors, you narrow down the scope of people you're attracting, okay? It's the opposite of the interaction business. And geographically, it's the opposite. Again, you don't have a farm area. You spread out geographically. That doesn't mean it's horrible for you. It just means you're making more opportunities available for your investors or for your associates for the investment. So this tool I'm going to go over here first is um, what we use to drum up funding uh, to buy properties. And, of course, we use it to identify uh, by certain markers, certain character traits, those who are in our uh, society who are more likely to want to invest. It's a tremendous tool. I mean, we've got some amazing results from this thing. So let's just dive into it. I'm going to have to switch gears here, all right, and go to another panel. So hang on to your seats. I'm going to reduce this and bring it. By the way, I'm also going to show you a tool called Bank Tracker. So just hang on to your seats, guys. We've got a lot of stuff to try to, to get into today's session, okay? It's the last window, so I've got to get it in. So hang out to the end because I'm going to show you something called Bank Tracker that shows you how to find banks that have not performing assets, in other words, properties where the loans are going south in your area, in your area one, okay? <coughs> Credit unions and things like um, So we'll go over that. I'll just show you another tool you can use. I'll start with one tool here, uh, an, an analysis tool, and then I'll show you in, in another tool, an additional tool you can use in your efforts, okay? So uh, first things first, this, I'm going to reduce my panel, guys. Um, actually, we'll put, we'll just check some questions here. Uh, before we jump into things too quickly, okay, we're okay on questions. So let's do this. Booklet, number one cover page. Go ahead and write that in your notes. Number one cover page. Right at the top. And do screenshots of this, guys. Um, if you're in the training, you guys ever do the training, or if you come to the event, you'll, you'll get the actual original Word document of this, okay? Um, for right now, though, just go ahead and take our screenshots of this. First things first. You start with this phrase, where the smart money is, okay? And just like that, it will change it to make it longer, shorter, no complete the statement. Right there, where the smart money is. It creates what's called an open loop in the reader's mind, <clears throat> which means they have to complete it inside their mind. They're formulating the question, well, where is it? Where is the smart money? Then you give them a photo of your area, okay? Make it somewhat appealing. Let me just write, here you've got some uh, Beautiful uh, scenery of the sky, close to landscape of the city. So it gives them, it humanizes us basically is what it does. This looks like business. This looks like money. Okay? And yet it's got this great sky in the background. Okay? Then you give the address, the answer. Invest in right here in, and you plug in your city. Now some of you are in Montreal, some of you are in Seattle, some of you are in Washington, D.C., New Jersey, North, New York, Florida, all, all over, even the Bahamas. Whatever it is, you put your city in there and use a picture from your area. <laughs> okay? Um, so that's covered. Okay. Oh, by the way, also put in your, your name. If you're an agent, you should put in your broker's company name and your contact information. This is my old broker's company going back years ago that I uh, uh, did immersion with. So um, you can actually, I think, still call that number, actually. <laughs> it goes through to, uh, to, our, to our company. So uh, in any case, um, that's cover page, all right? Now, page two. I'm going to kind of go through this quickly because I want to get to the potato here. Uh, page two is the letter, just simple introductory letter, okay? Now, this introductory letter in mind is this is an old version. It's actually quite lengthy now by today's standard. You can copy it if you want. The only thing I want to point out is this is you want to word it, you want to phrase it in terms that appeal to the person you're writing to. So if we're writing to someone who we believe is interested in investing, let's put some in there that's related to investing. Like, hey, did you know that nationally now 37% of all people are renting? That's a pretty startling figure. And for investors, that's like, hey, maybe I should pick up some rentals. In New York City, it's like, you know, 69 to 72% of people are renting. Okay? Um, in West Hollywood, if, when I was out there this past year, 82% of the people are renting. Okay? And here's a cool thing. You're thinking, yeah, yes, because nobody can afford anything. Well, that, that's everything relative, but think about it. If 82% of the people are renting, who owns 
owns the 82% of those units. That's right, and investors do. We think it should be us, you, all, all of you, and, and or your clients, okay? In any case, the letter should be, just remember this, W-I-I-F-N, what's in it for me? Not us, the person running the booklet, the person reading it, or the opinion, okay? So that's introductory letter. Okay, you have to customize this and make it your own, you know, put your own name and address on there, obviously. You can use mine, and you can come my way, I'll refer it back to you. <laughs> How about that? Okay, table of contents, actually really not necessary, although you can put it in there, you can just copy mine if you want, okay? And then the next thing I do is this is I give them a story, okay? This is a, a story of a duplex I, I used to own. Um, first, I give them some basics. What is net operating income? What is debt service? What is cash on cash return? And what is the cap rate? Just give them the basic formulas. And they go into the example. I give the actual address. I do a performer on the sale when I, when, I purchased, when I first purchased it. These are the numbers on the property, okay? Um, <coughs> Uh, and then I gave them the pro forma on the sale when I sold it years later. And if you look, you see I paid forty-two thousand for it, and I sold it for seventy-two thousand. Okay. Um, so you can look at the pro forma. Let's just stop here for a second. I'll go back up so you can see this. Um, all right. So the rents were bringing in about twelve thousand a year. T taxes, insurance, maintenance. This is old. This is old example. Today, this would be. You know, 150000 something like that, okay? So remember, everything's relative. In your area, this could be a million dollars. It could be half a million. Uh, I've taught in, well, maybe from 500 cities and towns in the U.S. and Canada, all 40, all 48 states and three Canadian provinces, just in the last few years. So everything's relative. The, the fundamentals never change, only the numbers change, okay? But the fundamentals don't change. In any case, uh, you can see the income, the expenses, and I calculated for the recipient cash on cash return, okay, and the cap rate. So they were earning cash on cash basis 16% uh, when they purchased a permit. Not a bad deal, right? Uh, and then I go into um, what that actually means in cleaning it. So let's just, uh, let, by the way, I bought this from an attorney, uh, down 5% from a line of credit I had, equity line of credit, and the, uh, uh, the lawyer. The attorney owned it, financed the other 95% of it for some interest. So here's the deal. I put down 5000 I'm going to read about, and that, I average 3000 a year positive cash flow. Okay, so you add that up. Maybe I owned it for like 11 years. That's you know, 33000 there. Okay, I got depreciation of about 3.5% a year. It's actually 3.41% if you want to be specific. Um, that amounted to about 15400 and. Uh, depreciation, of course, you have to recapture that on the sale. Uh, the mortgage was paid down by about five grand in that same time frame. I sold the building for 72, so the difference is 30,000 on the sale. You add up everything I gained on the property uh, in profits, so you subtract the original 5,000. Essentially, what I'm saying is I made on that $5,000 investment $70,000 in 11 years. I mean, that, I don't know what that rate of return is, but that, I don't know how you can do it anywhere else, okay? With, the, with an income-producing asset that you can go and see and touch and take pictures of and um, feel good about it, because they don't go anywhere, okay? In real estate, even though it did fluctuate in the last recession, uh, it does not fluctuate as much as uh, stock state. So the one number two is everything's relative. Phoenix, yeah, dropped and dropped dramatically. South Florida dropped dramatically. Uh, well, what for it? Parts of Southern California drop dramatically, but they also bounce back dramatically. Most of the country all dips in prices that were, you know, twenty percent, twenty-five percent. That that's not much. I mean, in right now in Toronto, the average home price is down. Um, well, it was down about twenty-five percent a few months ago. It's in, in step but back up again. But last year, uh, average price in Toronto was a million dollars. Now it's down to about eight sixty. Okay. Um, now it's going back up, but what the point is is that's only like a fourteen percent drop. I mean, we've seen the stock market drop in, in, in half. It take a decade to bounce back. Okay, real estate doesn't do that, guys. Um, 
it comes back much faster. So in any case, uh, I give them an article, and that's the article. If you've, if you've never done an investment, and you want to use this booklet, you, you have my permission to use my article. You have to credit me as the writer. That's just proper etiquette. Um, I really don't care personally, but you, know, um, you should do that. The reality is that that's led to a lot of um, a lot of future investing. I've, I've owned over the year and done thousands and thousands of transactions. Okay. Um, so in any case, let's show this screw forward into the booklet. The uh, next thing I do is I give them samples of properties. Okay. And I'll just scan through these. These are uh, sold properties, active listings, uh, properties that are under contract. Um, I give them a variety of properties because the booklet is not intended to sell properties, the booklet is intended to sell you, okay? That's why we don't just try to push um, properties we're actively trying to sell, whether we're our own as an investor or we're an agent type seller. Give them a variety so that you can earn trust because the booklet is not designed to sell properties again, it's designed to sell you, right? Um, you may be looking to drum up funding, uh, you may be looking to just find clients if you're an agent, which is, uh, this is one of the best tools you can use, by the way. This will help you get properties to buy, by the way. The properties you can, you, can, you can list as an agent to sell or as an investor you can buy. This book is a great way to establish credibility by giving them tools, information, inventory. Um, so let's skip ahead to the next section. Section four is the inventory again. So section five is we want to give them a calculator, okay? Now here's an example of a calculator. Um, it's just a simple spreadsheet. I'll get to it here in a second. Unfortunately, it's in a landscape view, so please forgive me. You'll see across this, this side, the rows are your income and expense, and the columns are the properties. So again, this is sideways, I guess, so I apologize. If I was tech savvy, believe me, I would rotate it for you, but I'm afraid, you guys, if I try to rotate this, we'll be here until tomorrow. <laughs> so, so please bear with me. Uh, you'll see columns are the properties, top rows are the income, bottom rows are the expense. Let me just scroll back up for just a few second, okay? So I can show you the, the row headings. Um, there we go. All right, so we have gross potential income, we subtract vacancy, we get gross, uh, effective gross income, which is what you originally were getting minus your vacancies. Vacancies right now, by the way, nationally are between 2 and 3 percent. Same up in Canada. So, so all of our Canadians are alive here. It's actually lower than the U.S. rates. It's less than 2 percent across the board. Um, so you get your actual gross income. Then you subtract basic expenses, property management, taxes, insurance, maintenance, repairs, utilities, uh, so forth and so on. At the end, you end up with your net property income. This is a basic uh, spreadsheet here, just a basic pro forma. I want to take a second and show you one more here that's going to really, really, really uh, impress you. Okay? This one we call Rental Property Evaluator, right? Um, it's an excellent spreadsheet. Uh, those of you who are current students have already got this. It's one of the best tools I've ever seen. Um, you can see you plug in um, up top the purchase price, okay? We're assuming a 20% down payment in this example, which leaves you a mortgage of 56000 Well, down here in this box right here, you put in the mortgage information. Loan amount 56000 5% interest rate, <clears throat> amortized for 20 years, and of course, a matching term of 20 years. All right, 12 payments per year. Your monthly payment's $369.58. Well, you get your to loan amount. So what that means is the initial investment is 14000 that were 70,000 minus 56,000 leaves you 14,000 you're putting down on the property, okay? It's 20%, which is what I recommend. But when you're starting, by the way, um, we got into this when we went over the, to how to actually buy rentals, what my philosophy is on, a, on money versus debt. So if you didn't see that one, uh, you may be able to still see it. I, I don't know if you can find it on Facebook or not. Uh, Maybe we can let you come out of the fair and get that to you. But you definitely want to watch the other four. Remember, the other four were the buying rentals, taking care of your rentals, which is the second part, which could be your property manager or you yourself managing yourself. So you know how to make money in this 
the surface of day from the bushes to put in wet holes. Part three was the flipping, and actually flip correctly, okay? Flipping without the wrist, so the titles are number one, rental uh, profits without the pain. Number two is turning rental columns into real estate profits. Number three is flipping without the risk. Number four, which is uh, Monday, wholesale is everybody wins. And today is investor age and make more money, not more work. Okay. So back to this. This next box is where we plug in the rents. Okay. You identify the type of unit. One bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, so forth and so on. Then you identify the number of units in that category. Okay. And the total units in the bottom. And then we identify the rent per type of unit, okay? And over here is the annual rent. And this column is about to multiply by 12. <coughs> Tell you that, 13,000 dollars a year. All right, now that's the, that's the good part. That's the incoming side where money comes in. Now let's talk about where the money goes, <laughs> okay? Uh, first things first, um, you've got your uh, gross receipts coming in, vacancy, effective uh, rental income and gross shopping income, GOI. Then you start subtracting all your expenses. And what I want to show you here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, is this, this calculator is really slick because it calculates all these percentages. Like real estate taxes, what is that as a percentage of your gross operating income? What is it as a percentage of your annual operating expenses? You know, taxes is chewing up about 14.1% of your operating expenses and about 4.5% of your uh, gross operating income, right? Um, you also get the uh, cost per square foot. So in any case, uh, all those ratios are, are out there for you. But here's all the categories. This is why I like this calculator. It's jet got all the, the categories in it. Property insurance, management, payroll, labor, utilities, accounting, legal advertising, supplies, uh, contract services for landscaping, snow removal, lawn care. Um, and then you get your net operating income. And then you can also plug in an annual best service that actually does that for you. At the end of the year, get your actual cash flow before taxes. We also give you the debt coverage ratio. In this case, in other words, this is the percentage of income that's going to be available for satisfying debt. Principal and interest in the mortgage payment, in other words. Okay? This is great because it's over 2%. Most banks in the last 10 years have been wanting to see something like 1.75. In the heyday before the recession, it was down like, like 1.25. I mean, they were really pushing the envelope when they saw what happened, right? Also gives you the cap rate, and they also give you a what if scenario. What if you sold it? Um, I think it's like five years later, cap rate 10%. Um, you, you'd have to sell it for 91000 to have it make sense, okay? Um, in any case, I wanted to show you that because that's a pretty cool tool. Now I want to show you something else, right? So, so far, I just showed you a tool, a booklet on how to attract people, attract clients if you're an agent, or attract money if you're an investor, or both, okay? Right, then I just showed you a really cool calculator you can use. Uh, next, I'm going to show you something called bank traffic, okay? So, let's just, uh, let's, let's do this. Let me show you the actual website. So, let's go to the website, okay? Bank tracker is right here. All right now, I'm going to go back up a second here so you can see the actual steps to follow. You first have this link bank tracker dot investigative workshop. I'm oh, sorry, investigative reporting workshop that org slash banks. And this is in all of your materials. If you're a student, if not, um, you, you may want to uh, come to the event this coming weekend. Uh, before we go over all this, all five programs we're going to cover in great detail in a three-day period. I mean, you, I mean, for the cost, if you look on, if you click on the link, Beverly's going to send you the link. Um, you'll see for today, this was the last of five sessions, by the way, session five and five. Uh, they, they are still going to let you have that for half price. I think the code is save now. You click on the link, uh, save now may be plugged for you directly, I'm not sure. And you can go there for, for half price. It's amazing. It's like 200 50 bucks for three days, okay? In any case, uh, back to Bank Tracker. Um, so you you type in this link, banktracker.investigativereportingworkshop.org slash banks. Down here you can plug in any bank you want. I just plugged in First Commonwealth Bank. There's a bunch of them. I'm going to click on the one in Indiana, Pennsylvania. And I 
to see <laughs> um, that clearly way back in the heat of the recession, they were in, they had problems, right? Look at one third of the mortgages, 33% were in the water. This is, these are, these are loans guys that are like in the third month of NOD, notice of the fall, 90 days, so get ready to or pull the trigger off. Now the bank's down around 5%, um, not performing assets, which is right around the median average, 5.5%. Right? So you can see, you can plug in any bank that you want, anywhere in the country, credit unions and traditional charter banks, okay? right? and you get to see who has not performing assets. You want to go visit these banks is what I'm getting at. And here's some more information. This tells you, yes, they've got not performing assets. All right? Down here is some really critical information. Check this out. You get the the uh, level of assets that they have, the base of assets. You can see this bank has grown pretty well in the last year. Um, how much is in deposits? How much is in loans? Okay, so they got about five and a half billion outstanding in loans. Is that right? Yep. Uh, you can see loan loss provision, which is how much they have earmarked for loan losses, which is about almost three billion. Okay. Um, uh, you can see the profit, the capitalization rate, which is about 655 million, which is really important. Um, capitalization rate is something that the bank regulators use to determine how much money a bank can loan to any one person. They actually call it the loans to one ratio. So depending on this number here, capital, um, that will determine how much money a bank can loan to any one person. Um, you know, I, I don't, back in the day it used to be like 1%. I don't know what it is now, but uh, they don't want to put the bank at risk. All right, you also see the loan loss reserve, right? Look at that, 48 million for this bank is sitting there in a holding tank, not doing anything, because banks go south. I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, loans go south. They have to have this in reserves to cover the loan losses that they're going to spread. So here's what I would tell you. That this is the big, the big aha. Uh -huh. Down here at the bottom, I'll just jump right to it. Troubled assets for this bank is 32 million. 32 million in loans at this bank are right now in trouble. They're, they're late. They're up to 90 days late. They're getting ready to pull the trigger on. What I was going to tell you is that, here's what I want to tell you. This 32 million is less than this 48 million. All right? I may go visit this bank. I may not. Okay? However, if this loan loss was here, this troubled assets ratio, this number here, 32 million, let's say that was 50 million or even 48 billion, 176 just like a low loss reserve, I'm going to go visit that bank like tomorrow because that means the amount of loans they have in default is equal to the amount of, amount of low loss reserves. That is, is they're, they're staying on thin ice if that's the case. That bank needs help. I'm going to go visit that bank tomorrow. Okay? Uh, in any case, this is one of the best tools I've ever seen uh, to help you beat the competition. I recommend that you stick with the small local community banks or what we call portfolio lenders. Okay, so Bill, everyone out there, you want to look for portfolio lenders because they do not sell the mortgage. A portfolio lender doesn't sell mortgages like Bank of America. A portfolio lender keeps the mortgages in house. Okay, and oftentimes they would rather get rid of something quickly if you show up with the right deal. And if you're an agent, you'll have an easier time, by the way, to get these banks to uh, loosen up for you. Anyways, bank shop, one of my favorite tools. Um, all right, let's see here. I want to show you one more thing. Let me get that. that um, here explain why we really focus on this. Why is this so critically important? It's because of this right here. Now before we jump into this, you definitely want to pay attention to this guys. This is the most important part of everything we talk about. Before I jump into it, let me check the uh, question boxes. I've been randomly like a mini after I'm gonna check and see if you have questions. Uh, Kimberly, Kim is asking Gary, how you can get a copy of the worksheet. Um, Hey, Bev, are we able to do that live online here? Uh, so everybody, uh, Kimberly, and everyone, uh, Beverly is actually monitoring the, the question box for me just so I can focus on content. Um, I just posted the question to her, Kimberly. I don't, I don't know the answer, but we'll, we'll do our best for you, okay? Um, and if you're able, by the way, Kimberly, are you able to, are you making it come down this coming weekend because you're going to get all this stuff. I mean, everything, we're just, I mean, from all five programs. Uh, okay, we're uh, when, when one does not have all the expense, would 45% be about realistic? Uh, Myrna, the, that ratio, the expense ratio, actually varies based on where you are geographically. 
So if you're way up north, like in, in uh, you know, Ontario, uh, Quebec, you know, uh, the Northeast, you know, Massachusetts, um, Wisconsin, all the states get a lot of harsh weather. That that number is going to be generally higher than if you're in a state like, you know, I, I don't know, um, you know, New Mexico, for example. Okay, you're just going to have more expenses related to to the snow removal and the damage of to cause from ice on roofs and frozen pipes and things like that. Um, also, Myrna, it depends a lot on the housing stock. How old is your housing stock? The older the properties, the higher the expense ratio. Just remember that. 45% is definitely not unreasonable. I mean, I've had properties that have 45% expense ratios. But generally, you're going to have a, uh, you're going to pay less for those properties. You have a higher cap rate because you're going to pay less for those properties. If you're in an area where, um, like parts of California, where the weather is just, just stable, I mean, it's 72 and sunny every single day, <laughs> you're not going to have one of those expenses, okay? Um, there's a plug for all you Californians out there, right? Okay, let's see. Let me go back and double check here. I think we're up. Uh, Myrna. Oh, you're in Fresno. Hey, Myrna. I remember you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Fresno, good area. You were, matter of fact, Myrna. Uh, Set up a strategy call with me. Um, there are students from uh, north of the other areas, you know, between the Bay Area and Sacramento, who are, are realizing they can come down to Modesto, Fresno, even all the way down to Bakersfield uh, for investing and for their investors. I know you've probably seen them from San Francisco, but uh, more and more. So definitely be on your toes and be aggressive. Use these tools. Remember, what we're doing, guys, is we're not casting a wide net hoping for things to happen to us. We're, we're acting intentionally. We're using these techniques to act intentionally to create the opportunities for ourselves. That's what we have to do in this type of marketplace. That's what we're going to talk about this coming weekend in, in Orlando for three days. Is you can't just cast, you send out the old stuff and, and wait for things to happen. You actually have to take meaningful, aggressive action and act intentionally to create the opportunities, okay? Um, because he, other people are. Uh, San, San Joaquin Valley, Central Valley. Um, I'll be back out there uh, next winter, um, in 2017, I was in California for a total of about three months. Um, so this winter, I was in uh, Florida, for the, been in Florida for the entire winter. Okay. Um, actually, right now, as I speak, I'm up in uh, Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada. Um, I'll be back in Florida Monday morning. So, but, uh, in any case, back to this. Let me show you what I was going to show you here, all right? Here's the deal, guys. This is you in the middle. You're either an, an investor or you're an agent. And if you're if you're really on, on top of your game, you're both. You're an investor agent. Okay. You get to choose. If you're one, if you're only one or the other, you're dramatically limiting yourself. You're, you're not even. You may not even be aware of how much opportunity that even on the table by by simple virtue of leverage. Okay. So let's just look at this. Um, right here in the middle. If, let's say you're an agent, and you're, tr only, you're just a traditional agent, all you're doing is just a regular agent, and all you're doing is working with other occupants. The challenge is, you've got a one-to-one -one ratio, one client, one commission, generally speaking, okay? You might get a referral every now and then, but generally speaking, it's, it's, a, it's a risky proposition to be in, particularly with the shift coming. So we want you to put on your investor agent hat, and if you're an investor, get your license, okay? Don't, don't hold back anymore, guys. If you're an investor, you don't have your license, get it, okay? Um, call me, email me, text me. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the easiest things you can do, quite frankly. Um, and I've got some great recommendations for you. So, in any case, let's say you work with an investor, someone like me. Who, when I first paid for my first mentor, I went out there and bought 10 new properties that next year, right? Now, my first property I bought was a, a friend of mine named Socrates, actually Bill Wilson. <laughs> How about that for a small one? Um, his dad helped us buy. We didn't need to get his money. He showed us how to buy it, right? One property, 10 years. I paid for my first mentor when I was 35 years old. In that one year, 10 properties. You do the math. 10 years, one property, no coach, all right? One year, 10 properties with paying for my first mentor. I bought 10 properties that next year. I need a property manager, for example. So let's just talk about leverage here. If I'm already a licensee and I've already got properties I'm caring for, I've already got a team built up. Maybe it's the guys, screening for tenants, showing properties, clean outs, all that stuff I've got in place. So 
what I did is I realized I was paying for proper management, and I'm thinking, why are they doing it? What's the, what's the why behind the why for proper management? Because it didn't make sense to me. Like, why would somebody work for 8%? And it looked like not fun work. Well, then what if you don't do the work? Okay, you're the business owner. You hire the people to do the work. I started my own proper management company, guys, and I went from just 40 units initially that I was managing to 700 units in three years with no advertising. The dentist kept telling the dentist, the chiropractor kept telling the chiropractor, so forth and so on. And here's why. Number one, yes, you get a management fee. Core business, help you manage it, manage your fee. You also get commissions because they keep trading properties. Two sources of income, one core business. And those tenants sometimes want to become renters. You can sell them the property. They're going to do with three sources of income, one core business. And here's the cool part. If you want to buy your own properties, there's no better place to buy it from inside that portfolio, right? Instead of buying it from people you don't know, buy it from inside a portfolio you're already managing. And here's the cool part. You get the leasing fee for leasing the vacancy. You get a lease application fee for people wanting to rent the units. You get the lease renewal fee every year to lease for years. You get pet fee, smoker fee, business call fee. We charge the owners for 10% of the right, like most companies do. You make 10% on the units of repair fee. And I hope they be the biggest secret of the world. We also charge the contractors 10% because we're giving them constant business. We're guaranteed they're getting paid. Unlike the usually a lot of contractors get stiffed and it freaks them out. Here, I'm, I'm guaranteed they're getting paid. And I give them the reporting and give them a 10 and 9 every year. I mean, most people would pay 25% for a small business like that. Here, we're charging them 10%. What I'm getting at is this is one of the biggest cash cows you could ever have. I love like flippers too, don't get me wrong. I know when a flipper buys a house initially, like me, that first property, the commission is going to be lower on the initial purchase because the house has to be the money. Put it back on the market, it's going to be worth more money. I know it's going to sell because flippers have to sell, and I work it into my contract, and I get the listing to get one relationship, one transaction, essentially, one relationship, excuse me, two commissions. I know 30% of the time I get the buyer. I also know that buyer sometimes has to close on something they've already got to buy this. Four possible commissions, one relationship. If any of your agents are struggling with other occupants, work with investors. Let me help you do this. Because when you're in the context of working with flippers, you will also get owner occupant business. Does that, does that make sense, guys? Um, by the way, type in, for those of you on Facebook Live, type in your comment section, because um, that's being monitored also, not just the GoTo webinar um, comments, um, but webinar. Facebook Live is also being monitored. So I want you to type that in and tell me, is that making, is this making sense what I can show you? I could go over all of these. Okay, I just went over wholesaling the other day on Monday. I showed you how you can make money five different ways as an agent. If you're a wholesaler, I also gave you some really important critical instructions on how to wholesale correctly so you profit the money you turn. Okay? Um, here's the deal. We want you to leverage your license to generate multiple streams of income, all right, so number one, you get cash flow coming in, so you can invest with money, cash, not having to borrow all the time. Number two, you get knowledge on investing. So number three, you can finally invest yourself. Get you know, an amen. Type that in. Type that one in on your amen. That'll tell me I'm, uh, I'm reaching it. So in any case, guys, if this, if this reaches you at any level, my gosh, come on down this coming weekend. <clears throat> Again, it's March 16th, 17th, 18th. Friday, Saturday, 9 to 5 foot things, Sunday will be better on uh, probably 1 o'clock or something like that. Man, you're going you're gonna to get more education than you can possibly imagine in three days. We're going to feed you lunch, by the way. We've got a cocktail reception Friday night with some Irish dancers, by the way. Uh, and then uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll have our uh, Ryan Snow who's going to be there. Um, he, he's, he's an awesome dude. He was number one in cut code years ago. Uh, manages his own brokerage company for a while. He's written a couple of books, and in fact, I'm in his latest book, which I hope we'll have with him so you guys can actually have a, have a look at it and, and get one for yourself. Brock Thomas will be there. Remember, he said he just did this, so Google it, Brock Thomas, you'll see. 60 million views on his latest post online. That's phenomenal. And he's one of us. He's going to be there. And of course, uh, Mark, well, hopefully, don't, don't hold me to that because I need to hear back from him on that. Um, but uh, they will be on Sunday. So, in any case, guys, um, I'm here for you. I want to help you. You've got to meet me halfway. I couldn't have made it.
they're sending less expensive than that cost. We actually, it actually cost us uh, between three or four hundred dollars per person to be there, and we're making it available to you right now for, for half. It's normally five hundred dollars. We're making it available to you today for two fifty. Uh, we do it on every one of these five events. We run it. And it's only all these five classes we've done. This is the fifth one, so this is it after the day. And you can see online, you go online, it is hundred bucks. You can get it for half that. You can bring a partner with you too. Okay. So uh, let me check the questions here real quick, guys. I just want to make sure. Um, uh, oh, I got some emails. How about that? You guys are making me feel good. Uh, Tom Schlederman. Hey, Tom. I think I saw your name. Uh, so I'll see you, Tom. I'll see you this weekend. Well, thanks for uh, being here. Congratulations, dude. Because you're gonna your business is about to shoot through the moon. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Let's see, Ed Hazel, Erie in Toronto, would like to buy you dinner if you have the time. Hey, Ed. Hey, Ed, I'm going to be, uh, this is a family weekend. Um, I haven't been back here for three weeks. And um, uh, but, but I'll, I'll be back here several times in, in April. In fact, um, I think I'll be back here four weekends in April. And I want to come up and help the, um, let's see, it's uh, uh, Sherry. In one of the Toronto market centers, you guys are putting on an event. I'm going to come speak at that event. Okay, so okay, I'll, we'll keep you posted on that. end. Um, Myrna, this five-piece webinar was awesome. So really appreciate you. Change is coming. And Myrna, you're welcome. I, I love doing this. I hope my enthusiasm shows. Uh, um, man, I um, I, I just I can't. We, there's somebody. We have people coming from all over, guys. Washington State, California, from all over. One of the guys coming just started, I mean, this past summer. He's already helping investors buy 75 unit apartment buildings. And we're going to put him on a panel. He's going to be there. So he's just like he's just like us, just like us. So uh, get ready. Um, what are the next dates and locations? Um, so, Mark, the big event is this weekend, March 16th, 17th, 18th. Um, after that, it's just it's the regular classes I teach at the offices. I will be in... Um, uh, let's see. So after next weekend, Mark, I'll be driving up back up to Virginia to visit my family for, for yeah. a, about a week or so. Um, if you go to my com, click on events, you'll see those class locations. Um, they're all around Washington, D.C. And then a few weeks later, they'll be scattered around Virginia. Um, in May, I'll be in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. And uh, June, I'll like, I looks like I'll be in Georgia. The Atlanta area. So, uh, in any case, uh, those will be posted online, Mark, on my com on the events tab. But those are those aren't these three-day events, Mark. Those are just the, the little three-hour classes, uh, which is what I've essentially done these last five. This five-part masterclass series was essentially uh, um, what I do in the in the West state offices for three hours. It's just what we did is because it's online, we 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 chunked it down into the smaller easier digestible chunks for you. Um, in the classroom, it's definitely far more effective because you're going to get a lot more interaction, a lot more engagement. You can ask questions more easily. Uh, and plus, we're going to get together, together there. Uh, boy, if you can make it all next weekend, man, that, you, you probably, it, it probably, I would tell you, for me personally, guys, me going to conferences and conventions, I first started years ago, um, just almost that, I'm not really desperation, but like I wanted to find out how are some of these people really thriving. I'm like, I feel like I'm doing okay, but I wasn't owning tens of millions of dollars in real estate at that point. I started going to the events, getting the education, meeting the people there, getting the information, taking more meaningful, effective, and intentional action steps, and that's when things took off. And now I buy big buildings, okay? Uh, I want you to do the same. Uh, uh, and if you'd like to do that, welcome aboard because you're all going to come to the right place. So, in any case, guys, uh, uh, we're going to be wrapping things up here. If you have questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, and I just want to thank you again for being part of this five-part series. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I get to do this from where, from where I am, whether it's at home or in a, in a hotel on the beach. And we're on a, on a cruise ship, which is where I was. Is that last week? Yeah, last week I did two of them from a, from a cruise ship. Um, that was pretty neat. That's the stuff you get to do, guys, when you tag along here and follow along and meet people like me and Rock Thomas. In fact, Rock Thomas, after our last master plan event in January, went to Thailand for six weeks. 
and we just work from wherever we are. We don't even call it like this. To me, this is fun. If you want to do this, I'm showing you exactly how to do it, okay? Remember, success leaves clues, and believe it or not, there are people like me who do enjoy helping. I have people like that for me, and I want to be that person, okay? So, uh, in any case, guys, um, let's see. Uh, Mark, if I just talk further about this and add another income stream, thanks for your Mark, you're very welcome. Um, and by, by the way, Mark, we don't have you, we don't want to have you eat the entire elephant at once. We just want you to take the first step. So what we do is help you determine the very best next step. For you, that might be uh, working with people by mental health, because that'll position you to do proper mentorship, and later on by your own property. So that's your three things right there. Or you might decide to work with flippers. So you can work with flippers, get the other contact, the other um, occupants within the context of two streams of income, and then you can flip yourself as a result. There's your three things. So that's just a simplified version of what I'm talking about. If this this is how you build business. Uh, and any of us can do it. And Josh, if you do my background, look, look, Bill knows me. Bill's known me for 30. Bill, you know I spent 37 years you know me. I'm mean, going to tell you, if you, if you really knew me like Bill did, you know, I'm probably the least likely example of the one you have to do any of you could do better than me. In fact, I would tell you, don't be like me. Be better than me. Okay? Be better than me. You can do it. Start now. Don't. Why would you hesitate? It's like Rock Thomas says, you say yes, and you figure out the how later on. It, it, that's how life goes. Had it perfectly right. The, the poet goes. You're the poet. When you commit, the buyer providence kicks in, and the right people show up at the right time, and giving the right information to help you with the right tools. Loosely worded, that's what he was saying, okay? And it's true. It works. That's exactly what I've done. There were times I didn't even know how I was going to make something work, but I knew I wanted to make it work, and I wanted it bad enough. I made the commitment to make it happen. Both also said something else very important. Achieving a goal isn't just about the reward you get for achieving a goal. Achieving a goal is also more about who you become as a person by achieving your goal, okay? Um, I mean, Bill... I still keep coming back to you, sorry, because you know me so. <laughs> um, I can tell you, you can you list, go watch Rock Thomas's uh, video that went viral for 60,000 views. It's the same story, just a different life. His life is different than my life. But he wasn't satisfied with status quo. He wanted to freaking do something about it, and he did. And so did I, okay? And so can you. So, uh, anyways, guys, uh, uh, for all of you who are coming next week, God bless you. Congratulations for, for uh, stepping into your highest and best self and uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of it. I'd love to go on the ride with you guys. Um, uh, this is from Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Thank you so much, Gary. I'm hoping, hoping to make it to the event next weekend. I can arrange some things. We'll see you again soon. Hey, Valerie. Oh, Valerie. Hey, if you need a babysitter, bring them. I love kids, okay? I actually taught a class where I held I held a infant in my arm while I was teaching class. <laughs> okay. Um, in any case, um, Bill Burnett is now feeling old because I just mentioned we moved each other for 37 years. Well, he didn't tell you we met when we were one year old, so we're 38. I just um, All right, guys. Questions? Let me know because I'm gonna I'm gonna be wrapping this up here. I want to be respectful of your time. I got the content out. I wanted to get out. I hope this helps you guys from the bottom of my heart. Uh, if you can make it next weekend, my gosh, be there. Be ready to learn and earn. In fact, we have a, a guarantee on the event. If you're not satisfied and you got what you came for, you are actually give you your money back. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, you're going to meet people who are... One lady started this last March, and in November, she terminated her notice to resign from her bank position. What is that? One, two, three... Eight, eight months, in eight months she was able to take that huge meaningful leap that she was a banker for years, okay? And in one year doing this, while she was working, by the way, part-time, but that's the stuff that I, I did it. I was a chicken. I was able to, I was making as much money in one, four years of investing. When I started investing, remember when I paid for my first mentor? In that year, my income from my investments was exceeding my banking income, okay? I just was chicken to leave. It took me four more years. Not about four years, I was much better off. Um, and I had—I was on a more of a cash basis then. You don't have to do that, guys. T take action now. If, you, if that's what you're looking for, is your freedom, 
this is how you do it. You get the properties first, build the businesses. It doesn't take, I mean, it's probably, some of you are probably thinking that sounds like a lot of work. It's not. It's so easy these days. Sitting up an LLC takes $125. And a one page form to fill it all out. That's it, you know? Um, anyways, guys, uh, God bless you all for being part of this. Uh, I hope my enthusiasm shows you. I'm going to do this again. It's been a lot of fun. I don't know when we're going to do it again, but um, maybe this summer. My voice is wrong, as you can tell. I've basically worn myself out these last few weeks. Um, but it's been very fulfilling, very meaningful, and I've seen a lot of you. I get Facebook requests out every single day. Um, but never had it happen before. So in any case, I thank you for doing that. Okay, guys, I think that is about it. We'll see you next weekend out of the Omni at Champions Gate, Florida, right outside of Disney. Uh, bring your families. It's a beautiful resort. They've rolled out the red carpet for us. we got food. we got Irish dancers. And most importantly, we've got each other. We've got a lot of content to go through. A lot of education, a lot of information. Bring your questions. And also, I forgot to mention this, my gosh. You're going to get to meet with a professional uh, trainer, their coach, their business coach, every one of them for free. And you get to have a free consultation with them to help you determine what your plan is for this year. I should have probably mentioned in the beginning. I apologize. Guys, don't, don't take that lightly. That, for me, has made all the difference. Okay? Um, in fact, I told you about my difference in my performance investing with, with my own mentor, my own coach. In brokerage for the agents out there, okay, uh, with my, when I paid for my first coach, my first mentor, and I paid a lot, I paid $4,000 a year, I went from $110,000 in that, the year I started, year after with the coach, $256,000. Then it went to five hundred and something thousand after the five something, five seventy something. Third year, they put me on a stage because I made $793,000 in commissions in one year. Third year with the coach. Okay, do the math, guys. Um, everybody I've ever met in business, in sports, in entertainment, all of them have their own coaches. Or coaches, or pull. And I've got multiple coaches. I spent eighty-six thousand dollars last year on my own coaching. Um, in any case, uh, I can keep going, but I think the questions are pretty much um, uh, we fill in the questions. So I'm going to go ahead and log off here. Look for the link. Uh, uh, to get your save now savings on the event, it's half price. Uh, bring somebody with you, March 16, 17, 18. Be ready to learn and earn. I will see you there. God bless you all, and have a beautiful weekend. God bless you and your families. Take care, guys.